Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us in our presentation for the Sidewall Case Competition. I'm Ashley Borger. Melissa Wood. I'm Rick Dreyer. I'm Clifford Inn. So a quick overview of our case competition is we will go into what is the real problem, what the new approach of that sidewall should implement be, um, how it will solve sidewall's problem, and what is the expected output of the plan. So what is the real problem? Currently, sidewall is using a traditional manufacturing. We have diagnosed this because uh, the company is currently unable to locate the true bottleneck. They have long lead times. Um, they have a high work in process inventory. The day that Henry walked through the plant, it happened to be at Truman Drilling. However, it has also been at the bonding station. They have missed their due dates and um, they've also delivered poor customer service just because uh, they've been working on kind of playing catch up. If they've got a bottleneck, they have to go back and take all of their employees and put them at one location and work 200%. Um, this is causing too much overtime, that's a cost to the company, and this expediting process is uh, constantly shifting priorities throughout the company. And now Alyssa will talk about what new approach that Sidewall should implement. So the first thing we had to do was identify the true bottleneck of the company. Um, the employees there kind of had ideas of what the bottleneck was, however we ne didn't necessarily agree with them. For example, they said there was a large inventory in front of the trim and drill process. However, this was only due because bonding, which is the process before trim and drill, has a larger capacity than the trim and drill station. So they were creating um, goods at a faster rate than the trim and drill could process. However, the trim and drill station still had a larger capacity than the actual bottleneck. So that is not the correct bottleneck. They also, Jim said the current blockage is at the bonding process. However, that this blockage moves depending on the day. A true bottleneck is not going to move depending on the day. So the reason that this they're thinking it moving is because they're putting simple kind of band-aids on what they think the bottleneck could be. And so they're turning non-bottleneck resources into actually bottleneck resources. So the true bottleneck that we determined is final assembly. It has the smallest capacity out of all of the different processes in the company and therefore is the true bottleneck the company should be focusing on. Um, so currently, Sidewall is doing a traditional manufacturing approach, but we believe they should go into a synchronous manufacturing. So this is just a table outlining it. And then in green, you'll see we highlighted, that is actually what corresponds best to Sidewall's production. So traditional manufacturing really focuses on reducing production cost for each individual process. It works, um, on, it works on trying to improve the efficiency of the system, so just the efficiency of the output. It does large bat sizes and as few setups as possible. This is just to decrease setup time, decrease resources that are used, just make it as efficient as possible. Um, its performance is measured by low cost per process, not low cost of the system as a whole, which goes along to the philosophy of the conventional cost optimization approach versus the total cost optimization approach. Synchronous manufacturing is a better match because it's synchronizing the flow of the production based upon the bottleneck constraint. So the system's only going to produce at a rate the bottleneck can keep up with. It works on total system performance because you're optimizing it to the bottleneck resource, which leads to a more efficient and balanced flow, which is the most important thing in, synchronized, or in synchronous manufacturing. For optimal batch sizes, the batch sizes can be smaller. You want to have the bottleneck resources, resource constantly working. However, the other resources that are non-bottlenecks do not need to be constantly producing because it's just going to create higher work and process inventories and these buildups that Sidewall is seeing. The setups, you also can do as many as needed. Again, you want as few setups for the bottleneck, but you can have more for the non-bottlenecks. Um, an hour lost at the bottleneck is an hour lost for the system as a whole. However, an hour loss for a non-bottleneck is just a mirage. It's not going to be an hour loss for the system as a whole because it doesn't matter as long as it's still keeping up with the capabilities of the bottleneck resource. Um, the performance measured, which is what Sidewall should be focusing on, is not the efficiency rate, but their throughput, their inventory, and their operational expenses. And the big philosophy behind synchronous manufacturing is just the theory of constraints. So we've said that they need to balance the workflow, but how can they actually do this? Well, we did an example for you, and given in the cases that each worker can do 
four sidewalls per shift for final assembly, which is what the true bottleneck is. So if we assume there are 10 workers at final assembly, each one can do four sidewalls, so that's 40 sidewalls per shift, and that equals 200 sidewalls total for the week. So that means you need to balance the rest of the work based on that they're producing 200 sidewalls per week. So this means you're gonna have four workers at the trim and drill station. They'll be able to produce that 200. Now of these four workers, one worker will not be constantly utilized. Um, you actually only need a little over three workers to produce the 200 walls. So you're gonna be utilizing four workers for part of the time, but then one of the workers will not be working on it fully because then you'll, again, be overusing the bottleneck resource. You also will have eight workers at the final testing stage. And now Rick will talk about the drum and buffer rope. Thanks, Alyssa. So the drum and buffer rope is kind of just a philosophy and it's very easy to think about. Um, the drum in this case is, it's the bottleneck resource, which is final assembly. It, it acts just like a drum, it sets the pace for the whole production line. So nothing can move faster than the bottleneck resource. Um, the buffer is just, you know, a little bit of safety stock in front of the bottleneck and a little bit in front of the finished goods. This just kind of takes into account Murphy's Law. Anything that could go wrong is going to happen. So this just gives you a little bit of buffer to guarantee that you're not going to um, starve that bottleneck resource. You want that always working um, because an hour lost at the bottleneck is an hour lost for the whole system. And the rope is just an upstream communication from the bottleneck that ensures goods aren't being put into the system that the bottleneck can't push out. So, you know, raw materials, it can't be pushed into the bonding or anything like that before the bottleneck is ready to receive them. So the planning systems, currently they're using a 20-year-old MRP system that's just inefficient for what they're trying to do. Um, they use backwards scheduling, which basically takes the due date, um, say if something was due on week six and it takes three weeks, you're gonna start it on week three. Um, this ignores the capacity constraints. Um, it just, it's just inefficient because you're setting yourself up to miss due dates. Um, whereas synchronous manufacturing uses forward scheduling, which in that same six week case, you're gonna start on week one and you should be done by week three, giving you a buffer for anything that could go wrong and also reducing your lead times. So currently the only quality checkpoint is at the final testing stage after final assembly. We think there also needs to be one right before final assembly um, since it is the bottleneck, especially since the majority of all the flaws are coming from the trim and drill station right before final assembly. That means they're making an error, they're putting the piece together and taking time at a, at a needed resource, and then it's going to have to go to final assembly, final testing, and then sent back through because they're going to have to rework it. This would decrease operational costs because, you know, they're not taking the time to build a part that's defective anyways. Um, it also reduces scraps and labor costs, and it increases throughput because it's giving the bottleneck less work. And you want that, the bottleneck to be as efficient as possible because it needs to be cranking out product as efficiently. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about how it would solve sidewalls problem. So basically what synchronous manufacturing does is it optimizes the system as a whole by managing the flow of goods. And I mean this leads to increased throughput, decreased inventory, and decreased operational expense. Um, what they're doing right now, um, there's a large in, uh, inventory in front of all their ovens because they're waiting for product to build up so that they can have a full oven before they run it. This drives down their efficiencies, but it's also inefficient in the sense that they don't need to be filling those ovens because the bottleneck can't handle all of those goods anyways. It also decreases lead times because of the forward, forward scheduling that I spoke about, high due date performance, and less overtime for the workers because they're not staying up those last couple nights before our products do and trying to crank out product. They should have buffer set up in that time and they should be, have plenty of room. Um, it also gives you more agility and flexibility within the product because um, you know you have that buffer and if something comes up really urgent, you can throw it into the system because of those small batch sizes. You don't have to stop a large production order. You can run it through and you're all set. To the quality checkpoint, like I said, it's gonna decrease the number of rejects, reduce scrap and layer costs, increase throughput, and the biggest thing it, it's doing, it reduces the double use of the capacity constraint resource. You don't wanna have to assemble the same part twice, especially when that resource is highly needed. And it decreases operational costs due to the labor savings you'll see. Um, now Cliff's gonna go into what the expected output of the plant might be. So before I cover the expected output of, of production, I think we, I'd like to cover just the current status of the company. So the average production rate currently for a small airplane is about 120 sidewalls. 
From there, large airplanes are amount to 70 sidewalls, and the total averages to around 190 to 195 sidewalls. Um, any of the two other larger planes that were stated in the case, though, those were primarily based on need. If we look at our calculations and what we've uncovered, we've seen that there's a pro with the implementation of the synchronous manufacturing system, we'll have approximately 60 to 75 percent inventory reduction. And this goes into account of what Rick and Alyssa mentioned earlier with having smaller batch sizes, accounting for the bottleneck resource. And this will really compress the lead times and it will only give the company optimal uh, batch uh, buffers, um, which would highly decrease the, uh, some of the high inventory le levels that they have in front of some of their stations. Also, we would have a 20 to 40 percent increase in additional capacity. This really goes along the lines of this is the capacity that the company has available utilizing their given resources, original resources. And so um, we like to approach, as far as capacity goes, that the company shoots for an optimal capacity. This concludes our presentation. Um, we'd just like to thank Supply Chain Next for providing this opportunity, and we look forward to hearing from you soon.